My name is Shakespeare William I own the feather quill I am the writer most familiar to you My way with words amazes me Came up with so many phrases me But still the number dazes me too Good evening ladies and gentlemen I am William Shakespeare, an English playwright, poet, actor and dramatist. The Merchant of Venice is a comedy which revolves around the life of Antonio, a merchant who takes a loan from Shylock, a moneylender, to help his friend Bassanio to court Portia. The play involves a series of events which will be unveiled by my characters. Moving on to the first scene, to meet Antonio, who is deeply in remorse. He is accompanied by his friends Salerno and Solano. To tell the truth, I don't know why I'm so sad. I'm tired of being sad. And you say, you're tired of it too? Your mind is focused on the ocean where merchant ships are sailing. Any little thing that might make me worry that something bad would happen to my ships would make me sad without a doubt. It's not my merchandise that is making me sad. Here comes Bassanio, your most noble relative, along with Graciano and Lorenzo. Goodbye, we'll leave you to these friends. You care too much about worldly things. Those who care too much about things end up losing them. Believe me, you really don't look yourself. My Lord Bassanio, since you have found Antonio, the two of us will leave you two alone. Well then, tell me now who the lady is that you made an agreement with to go on a secret trip. I owe the most to you, Antonio, both in money and in love. And because we are good friends, I know I can tell you all my plans and plots for paying back all the debts I owe. There's a lady in Belmont who has inherited some riches and is both beautiful and virtuous. Her name is Portia. You know that all my money has been put into my ships. I have neither the money nor any goods to sell in order to raise some funds for you. Go, ask around to find somewhere you can borrow some money and so will I. Bassanio goes to Shylock, the greedy money lender of Venice. 3,000 ducats, huh? Yes, sir, for three months. Antonio will be the guarantor of the loan. Antonio will? Can you help me out? Will you agree to the loan? Antonio is a good man. Have you heard anyone say otherwise about him? Oh, no, 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 I haven't. I just meant to suggest that is sufficient guarantor for the loan. May I speak with Antonio? This is Mr. Antonio. I hate him because he lends out money without charging dress. It forces me to lower the interest rates that I loan it. I will satisfy my old grudge against him. Shylock, are you listening? Let's sign an agreement. If you do not repay me the agreed upon amount of money on the agreed upon day, in the agreed upon place, you will forfeit to me one pound of your fair flesh to be cut off from whatever part of your body I choose. Content in faith, I'll seal to such a bond and say there is much kindness in you. You shall not seal to such a bond for me. Don't worry. I expect to make nine times the amount of this contract within these next two months. Now let's meet the female protagonist, Portia, a rich, beautiful, intelligent heiress of Belmont. The will left by Portia's father instructs that she is not to be married until a suitor guesses correctly which of the three caskets contain her portrait, under penalty that if a suitor guesses incorrectly, he will never marry anyone. The caskets symbolize the dominant tendencies prevalent in human nature. The first suitor is the Prince of Morocco from Africa. Madam, the caskets are ready. I beg you to lead me to the caskets so I can try my luck. One of them has my picture inside, Prince. If you choose that one, then I am yours. Oh hell, what is this? A skull? Here comes the next suitor, the Prince of Aragon who is in Belmont to try and win Portia's hand in marriage. Hurry, hurry, please. The Prince of Aragon has won his oath and now comes to make his selection. Here are the caskets, dear madam. I am prepared to take the risk. I know the rules. What's here? The portrait of an idiot holding something? How different this picture is from one of Portia. Bassanio is now in Belmont to try his luck. Here are the caskets for you, sir. 
What do I find here? The picture of beautiful Portia. The reason behind Bassano's selection of the lead casket was his wisdom rather than a rich external appearance. My lord and lady, it is now time for those of us who have stood by here and seen our wishes come true to cry out, good joy, good joy, my lord and lady. Bassano explains to Portia that he has no wealth of his own, but borrowed money from Antonio, whose ventures also failed miserably. Shylock is now determined to have Antonio's flesh and has sought Duke's help. Shylock takes Antonio to prison. Portia believes in the importance of helping Bassano rescue Antonio and she decides that she and Elisa will go to Venice in disguise to help the beloveds. Let's move to the trial scene. How can you hope for mercy if you don't show it yourself? I have bought the pound of flesh that I demand from him. It is mine and I will have it. If you deny me, your laws mean nothing and there is no power to legal agreements in Venice. I have the power to dismiss this court unless Bellario, a learned doctor of law, comes here today. I have sent for him to decide upon this case. Where is this man? He is waiting nearby to hear whether you will let him into the court. All my heart. The letter says that Bellario is too sick to come, but that he is sending a young doctor of Rome called Balthasar to oversee the trial. Portia then arrives disguised as Balthasar. Welcome. Take your place here. Are you familiar with the different sides of the case? Yes, my lord. Is your name Shylock? Shylock is my name. You are at his mercy, aren't you? Yes, as Shylock says. Do you confess that you've broken the agreement? I do. Then Shylock must be merciful. Why must I? Tell me why. Mercy is not something that one is forced to practice. It falls easily like gentle rain from the sky. It's a doubly blessed thing. It blesses both the person showing mercy and the person receiving mercy. We pray to God for mercy and that same prayer should teach us all to show mercy to others. My deeds are my responsibility. I want the Lord to be upheld, the penalty that which he must forfeit because of the loan. Can he not pay the money back? Yes, I have the money for him in the court, even twice a sum. With all my heart, I ask the court to issue its judgment. Have some surgeon on call nearby, Shylock, to stop Antonio's wound so he doesn't bleed to death. Is this spelled out in the contract? I can't find it in the contract. It is not in the contract. You merchant, do you have anything to say? Give me your hand, Bassanio. Farewell. Don't grieve because I have fallen into this misfortune on your behalf. Speak well of me, your honorable wife. Antonio, I'm married to a wife who is as dear to me as life itself. But I don't think as highly of life itself. I would lose all of it. Yes, I would sacrifice everything to rescue you. Your wife wouldn't be too happy to hear that if she were around to hear you make that offer. And you must cut this flesh off of his breast. Such a wise just the right sentence. Come, get ready. Hold on a second. There's something else. This agreement doesn't give you any drop of blood. The words are a pound of flesh. So take what is yours. Take your pound of flesh. But if in cutting it off, you shed one drop of blood, your lands and goods will be confiscated by the state of Venice by the city's laws. What a just judge. Oh, you wise judge. Well then, I hope the devil gets him for this. I won't stay here any longer to argue. Wait! The law has another requirement of you. It is enacted in the laws of Venice that if a foreigner is proved to have directly or indirectly attempted to kill a citizen, the citizen against whom he plotted will take half of his goods. The other half is confiscated by the state. On your knees then and beg for the Duke's mercy. I pardon your life even before you ask. Half of your wealth belongs to Antonio. The other half goes to the state. And this may be reduced to a simple fine if you show humility. Yes, the money due to the state can be reduced, not the money due to Antonio. If it pleases my lord, the duke and the rest of the court, 
I am content to give up half of his goods or to me as long as he gives me the other half of his wealth so that I can invest it and upon his death give it to the gentleman who loves his daughter he will do this or else i will take back the pardon that i just pronounced here antonio thank this gentleman for i think you owe him a lot dear sir take some remembrance of us as a gift if not payment as a token of your gratitude i'll take your ring i won't take anything else sir this ring was given to me by my wife and when she put it on my hand she made me swear never to sell it or give it away or lose it that's what many men say as an excuse not to give gifts away also welcomes bassanio and antonio rationo then reveals that bassanio gave his ring away bassanio tries to get portia to understand why he gave it away but she is not satisfied she then gives him another ring by heaven this is the same ring i gave to the lawyer here is a letter read it when you can in the letter you will learn that portia was the lawyer and narissa was her clerk antonio you are welcome here and i have even better news in store for you than you expect open this letter soon and you will read that three of your ships have suddenly come into harbor full of riches the lesson we learn from the merchant of venice is one must always be ready to help others in any critical situation and show mercy to others hope you all like the play thank, thank you, you.